you search far and wide for stimulating secondary geography ICT-based resources? Well, today on a resource review ICT special, we'll be exploring three that might be just what you're looking for. They are a CD-ROM of interactive worksheets, a high school website that contains a wide range of activities, and a website all about Antarctica. Recommending today's resources is David Mitchell, Tutor in Geography at the Institute of Education, University of London. On the panel today is Stuart Cousins, AST Geographer with a focus on e-learning at Horbury School in Wakefield, West Yorkshire, and Adrienne Jones, a freelance education consultant. And to give us a tour of how the resources work, we'll be going over to Matthew Tosh, our resident ICT investigator in the test lab. Well, David, your first choice of resources for us today is called Jogit. We're focusing on Key Stage 3 version. Tell us about this one. Well, what I like about this resource, it's, it's using the internet, and I think the internet is a fabulous resource for geography, but often it's, it's misused, I think. It, it, there's a lot of uh, pupils trying to search for material, not knowing where to go. Okay. This resource is uh, it's quite a simple idea of worksheets based in Word, Microsoft Word, uh, which link to the internet. Okay. A very simple idea. All right, here's an example. Um, they're simply pages uh, in a Word document which have been uh, produced with uh, activities and links to the internet embedded within them. Uh, it's editable as well, which I think is important, so teachers can change and adapt it as they wish. To give an example of, uh, of one of the, the, the worksheets, this one's looking at the weather and climate uh, and trying to understand uh, weather forecasting using, using websites from the Met Office. But they're embedded here. So if I follow the, uh, the instructions given in the uh, worksheet and click on this link, we should see the website come up right. showing choices of uh, satellite images from around the world here. So um, I would choose, make a decision which one's most uh, appropriate. I think I'll go for this one, the British Isles. So I, I, I now understand the resource. I mean, this is for pupils to be working on at, at the computer. Yes. But it, it's very guided. It's all, all the sites they go to is very safe. They're not sort of just let loose on the internet, as it were. Exactly. All right, well, for a bit more of a tour of this resource, let's go over to Matthew in the test lab. Jogit really isn't a piece of software. It's a collection of worksheets on a CD-ROM, all featuring interactive links to web pages or images. The CD is divided into two sections. There's one for pupils and one for teachers. And I'm going to have a look at the pupils section first. I'm going to click on this one here about shopping and open the first worksheet. You can see some of the tasks there. There are images to help embellish the work. You can see that pupils have to research an out-of-town shopping centre using one of the online mapping services. Now the worksheet doesn't tell you which online mapping service to use, so the pupils have to do a bit of research for themselves. Let's have a look at the other worksheet then. This is a, an extension task. Now all of the topics have extension tasks. This one's actually about internet shopping. The final file I want to show you is an assessment target sheet. And the idea is once pupils have finished doing the questions, they can assess their levels using these level descriptors on the grid here. Now I have mentioned the teachers section, so we'll just have a quick peek at that. It mirrors the pupils section on the CD-ROM and features answers where applicable. You can see they've filled in the table there. Now it's worth noting, because the answers are here, if you're installing this on a network drive, obviously you want to keep the answers away from the pupils, well for the time being you do anyway. I think it's a really nice idea that the worksheets are embellished with web links and images. The only pitfall is if a website goes down temporarily or permanently, then that's going to scupper your worksheet. But there is the update page, which is good. That's updated once a month. But you'll have to manually update the links in the Word documents yourself. So keep an eye out on the update pages. Well, I've got my internet shopping links up at the moment, so I'm going to hand you back to Hermione and do some shopping. Right, crochet needles, where can I find those? Well, let's turn to you, Stuart, because you've actually used this resource in the classroom. How did you find it? Very versatile, good value for money, and something that's safe for children to use because you have the internet, which causes concern for parents. So it's well structured, and you can easily use it within a classroom setting for them to then take home and use at home. Uh, it's got 
up-to-date pages, you're not spending lots of time as a teacher having to go around and search the web yourself. And children are very focused on task. You give them a half an hour exercise, you're fairly confident that's how long it's going to take. Adrienne, what are your thoughts on this resource? Well, with all its web links and information, it obviously offers more than any textbook can. But I did want to ask a question about the protection whilst on the web. Um, is it possible for students to go off task, for example, by starting to explore other websites? Well, it's, it's always possible for pupils to go off task, but exploring other websites, it would depend on the exact computer and the exact place that the, uh, the pupil was looking. So if it's within school, that school will have certain firewalls and certain protection, so they can't access uh, websites that the school wouldn't want them to access. OK, well now let's move on to David's second choice of resource, and this is a website that comes from Wickham High School. So tell us, why does this website stand out? There are a number of, uh, of very good geography department websites, um, but this one is particularly well organised. It's particularly rich and, and well linked to excellent resources in the web. Some of the attractive features are, for example, the animations. And a lot of these processes, they're quite difficult to conceptualise for, for pupils, um, especially static pictures and diagrams in, in books or, or the best drawn diagram, if you like, on, the, on a board. But these move. Well, it looks like an excellent site. Let's go for a bit more of an in-depth tour with Matthew over in the test lab. Someone's been really busy here. This is the Wickham High School Geography Department website. The site is split up into year group topics and we can see here if I click on the year 7 one. And I want to show you some of the resources here. There's some really good animations. Just look at how many there are on plate tectonics alone. Well, we'll take the top one. Now, this is a good use of flash, but I'll show you a little trick. If you right click and uncheck the play button, the animation pauses and this gives you an opportunity to talk about the animation. For example, if you're using an interactive whiteboard. Well, I now want to show you some of the key stage four information on the website and to get back to the home page I can click on the geography button at the top. There's one thing I will say about the website though is that you'll see some of the text is a little bit small on the screen but we'll plow on anyway. And I'm going to have a look at a virtual London Docklands tour. The page is well set out, a good balance between text and images. You'll see that some of the images are interactive. For example I can click on the London City Airport button down here and it gives you a little case study on the airport. Now a really good place to start for research is this link down here on the home page, the Research and Geography link. And the writers of the website have, have trawled the internet and, and picked out some good starting points. They claim to have over 250 websites linked from this website. Now to find your way around the site quickly and, and see what it's got to offer, I do recommend having a look at the site index on the home page. There's plenty of stuff here. You will need to have Flash installed on your computer before you access the website, but this is standard for most school computers. And now back to Hermione. Well, David, Matthew said somebody at Wickham High School had been busy, and he was not joking. It's a vast site. I mean, how, what do you think its key strengths are? Well, it, it certainly is vast, and I think that leads into its key strength, really, which I think is for independent learning of pupils, which would need to be structured pretty carefully by the, by the, the teacher. But uh, I think, especially older pupils, I would say GCSE and uh, ASA2 pupils, students are going to get a lot out of this. Because it's well laid out, it's well structured, you can find some really excellent resources there that have, that have already been considered uh, by, the, by the teacher to make sure they're appropriate and useful. All right, well, let's now hear from Stuart. What do you think the strengths of this site are? I think they're twofold. Uh, in year 10, taking up David's point about key stage four, uh, we study natural hazards, and this resource is right up to the mark. And we encourage children to produce PowerPoint presentations and go and link to websites. So this took a lot of that work away in terms of they could focus their efforts and they also got lots of very dynamic resources that they could then, once they were into it, actually start to understand because we then get them to present back to the group. The other strength of this package is obviously there are increasing numbers of staff teaching geography that may not have it as their main specialism and this gives tremendous support and it is an exemplar of extremely good practice. Adrienne, what do you think? 
I, I was um, interested in looking at global warming and there were, there's a section in that for younger pupils and what I really liked about it was it was, very, it was language of the pupils, it was the pupil voice, so it said things like it's cool to protect the planet. So I think although you say it's for older pupils, I think there's actually stuff there that in independent learning terms young pupils would actually get from that, it's their website, you know, I think they'd enjoy yeah. it from that per point of view. Yeah. I agree with you, and the areas are set out there as well, there's year seven, year eight, yes. year nine area as well. Well great, now let's move on to David's third choice of resource. This is another website, this time all about Antarctica. Explain this one to us, David. Well this is a very recent website that I think is a fantastic resource to look at a really exciting place, a fascinating place, Antarctica, and explore it in a really good geographical way. Now it comes to us from the Royal Geographical Society. Would you like to give us a little tour? Certainly. So the teachers area shows us uh, what is meant by different sections in each page. So for example here you can see um, the section what, where and why. Um, there are facts, cool facts, cool clips, um, some excellent quality uh, video clips. Icebreakers are starter activities. Um, and there's lots of really neat little starter activities. Uh, go with the flow are the main activities, <laughs> extended. It sounds yeah. like it's really nicely thought out. <laughs> it's very well thought out. Um, there's even an activity timer that you can see in the corner of the screen there, which can be set up at different speeds, um, which is Antarctica with a, a needle ticking around <laughs> Antarctica and some lovely noises as well. So it's very multi-sensory. Well, Stuart, what did you think of this resource? Well, it's free, <laughs> uh, and that's a big consideration. And it. it it covers a wide range of topics for a wide range of people. It's not just for pupils at Key Stage 3 or 4. It's really cradle to grave. So as a teaching resource for you, uh, not just sort of interest in top the topic of Antarctica, you think this particular site stands out? Oh, it's very good. It's highly professional. It's full of, as David says, multi-sensory resources right, okay. uh, that appeal to a wide range of children. The only thing I'd add to it is that I, I like the way that comparisons are made. For example, on here it says about um, the average size of an ice sheet being the same as 10 canary wolf towers. It actually helps young people imagine mm. what it's like. So it, it, it is, it really understands about learning and how you imagine something it's like this. Very I've, well I've, thought out. Site, it's rather sound, a treasure I trove, I think, of resources. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Three very popular resources today. Just to recap, they were Jog It Key Stage 3 CD ROM from Bolt Education, the Wickham High School Geography Department website from Wickham High School and the Discovering Antarctica website from the Royal Geographical Society. For more information about the resources discussed, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review, or email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. I'd like to say a very big thank you to our panel, to David, to Stuart, and to Adrienne. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye-bye.